Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be trying something a little bit different with an official new series where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. The server and Discord links are in the description and I'll also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's anything that catches your eye. Also, I'd love to hear any feedback you guys have in this format or anything else you'd like to see different. But anyways, let's get right into it. Here we're on UK streets. Uh, we're following P3. His name's technically Pez, but... uh. For some reason, I decided to call him P3 and it's stuck. You can see this, that corner is a little tricky. It seems like a lot of times the barriers, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they reach out and kind of grab you. But really, this was my first warm up session, I would say, where I'm just trying to fill out the car, think about the lines. Um, a lot of times, I'm trying to think about lines that are going to work for more, I would say, like trains <clears throat> or things like that. So. You'll see like there might be some lines that are a little bit more shallow, but I'm really just trying to maintain that speed. And, and there you can kind of see, I cut a little bit hard into that corner. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think for my first lap of the day, not bad. Here, uh, one thing that I've seen that really helps is trying to get a lot of speed in this corner. I really wish the track cam worked here, but um, going all the way outside, a little bit of left foot brake and then kind of just guide the car through that corner. This is kind of the same deal right here. Just kind of keep it wide, trying to really stay consistent on the angle. And here, a nice little manji to just kind of reorient us and boom, uh, we're reset back. Also really try to take this corner wide. I think it sets you up really well for this one right here. And sometimes it really depends. I've tried to e-brake there but I'm not really sure if it makes a ton of sense, especially when you have a lot of cars behind you. So here again, just trying to fill outside zone. You can see everyone behind me doing really well on the follow, even a little bit shallow, hugging the curb a little bit, looking for the barriers, but try not to hit them. I I've been asked before too, like how do you think about the rear of your car and like where it is? Basically, I think it just it comes down to just driving it, but I know with the S15, it seems like the rear is a lot shorter than the front. So I basically just try to think about it like, hey, where is the back of my seat as a, as a driver, right? And then that typically is going to be the end of the car, roughly. Not totally sure if that's like true, but that's kind of like what I look for. And here you can you can see I've been finding a lot of success with keeping a little bit more shallow tight on that corner and then pulling all the way outside again, really trying to keep my speed up here as much as possible. A little bit shallow of an angle just to set me up with a lot of speed as much as I can too. Uh, and again, I think it just helps really set it up, keeps it really fluid over here. And, and I know maybe some of you watching are like, hey man, can you please shift out of third gear or whatever gear you're in? I typically have found that I try to stay in just one gear um, as much as possible. It, it's just a little bit easier, takes a lot of complexity out of it. So that might be why you're seeing that, but uh, that's, that's just kind of a driving preference. And here we switch into more of a chase. So throughout this video, I really try to give a what a lead looks like and a chase looks like for the most part anyways there are going to be a couple clips in here that you're going to see where it's just a little bit of a, a session more than a hey i'm leading and hey i'm chasing kind of situation but here i'm really trying to stay close uh, we have 40k right in front of me I'm trying to stay close and really time those transitions here i made a little bit of a mistake i personally thought he was going to go forward, uh, but I think he might have e-braked a little bit or something like that where he reduced the speed. I also, when I drive, uh, if it's helpful, I really think about how I can be consistent and predictable. And I'm thinking about all the drivers behind me. And, and if you look at the track cam, especially when you'll see a lot of uh, choke ups or slowdowns in front, a lot of times you'll see the train kind of collapsing on, on itself. And that's really what I personally try to avoid. But I think UK streets, uh, not a lot of people drive it, but I, I really do think it's a pretty good warm up trap uh, track. Excuse me. Really easy to drive in general, but also has a couple points where, you know, you got to use your left foot brake a little bit, or maybe you're just like maintaining speed to get certain angles. So I really enjoy this track. I mean, it's definitely a great warm up one. I think it just happened to be on the server at this time uh, when I joined in, but sometimes 
they kind of decide those type of things, right? So overall, though, that I mean, that's really good. We're now switching over to BHS Drift Playground. This is a little bit newer of a track. I really enjoyed it. And actually, we're uh, anyone curious. We're actually on the Swarm V2 pack. The Swarm V1 pack was really good, but I did feel like it didn't have enough grip. And I think this track especially, a lot of speed is, is really what you're looking for. Um, you'll see most of this video, I believe. I'm going to be pretty much just pinned into my throttle. And this corner is really interesting. I always really like to take it as fast as possible. And you can really throw it in. I think right here we're seeing a little bit of left foot brake. But if you hit that corner properly, you'll really feel that you can kind of just carry the car and the weight of the car rather than having to really left foot brake. And then right here, you'll see outside zone and then a little bit early outside of the outside zone. I don't know if it's true, but it does feel like it is a little bit better for more trains. I think obviously for a competition or something like that, like that's not going to be great. Uh, but just for like maintaining that speed, I, I think that's really, really good. And here we're transitioning to me actually chasing someone. We have OTM reg and OTM mods up in the lead in front of me. Really good drivers. I'm not too sure how much they've driven this track but really easy to follow. And, and I think too, like just as we're watching here, um, you'll kind of notice one thing that I would just point out is I've seen some people where they want to take their own lines when they're chasing. And that just ends up with them having a really big gap behind, uh, you know, whoever is in front of them. Really, you want to try to keep that proximity, but also make sure, especially in a situation like this, where you have two cars behind you, or, you know, maybe even just a car or multiple cars, you want to be chaseable, right? So a lot of times either, like I mentioned, there's a really big gap, but also I've seen where people go a little bit too crazy and they'll just try to choke up on whoever's in front of them, right? And then if you're thinking about the drivers behind you, that's kind of where you fall into a little bit of issues, at least for a follow. All right, now we are switching to clutch kickers. I personally love this map. I, I don't know. I I know it's a little bit overdriven, especially with a lot of servers out there, mainly just run clutch kickers. I think it is a unique track where it can be somewhat easy, but also there's a lot of technical sections. I mean, right here we have like, you know, I guess I should just say that it is a clutch kickers. That's the name of the track. You'll see me kicking the clutch quite often. This S15 in the way that it's set up, at least for me, is I'm really focused on the grip side of things. And because of that, more often than not, I'm having to really fight to keep the wheel speed up. But I feel like the benefits of having that more grip in the car outweighs having to, to kick it. And also that corner we just took is really interesting as well. Like I've been back and forth of, do I e-brake here? Do I just throw it in? Do I kind of push in the clutch and glide it? I don't know if I really have like a hard answer for you there. It really depends on the car, but also I would say the lines are really important. Like right here, we're kind of filling the outside zone, staying a little bit shallow to keep up with uh, OTM Rek, who's in front of us. I typically aim for that black spot right there, uh, just to go into this corner. feels like it sets it up pretty well. And it's crazy. I mean, like, look at these guys in front of me. They're just straight up killing it. I mean, that's... Watching this back, I, I mean, I did edit this uh, a little bit, kind of took some clips out of it, but... It's always so cool to watch. I always enjoy, especially when we're driving on the weekends, kind of being in the mid to backpack, just to see everyone, you know, <laughs> drifting in front of me, I guess, right? But yeah, this is a really fun track. I would definitely say like, if you can work on being consistent and predictable, uh, you'll find a lot of success. But also really like, if you're in a public lobby, it is a little bit challenging because you might have drivers who are in a lot of different skills. Um, right you know where they're learning the car or maybe even the track so it can be really hard to follow people or to find people to follow i always feel like when i jump into public lobbies like this not like this actually because well technically our server is public but i guess what i'm saying is like a server that's public that you might not know anyone you're having a hard time finding someone to follow it's always a good idea to just say hey you know what i'm gonna focus on my lines trying to make sure i can be consistent and i think uh, maybe it's just me, but 
it seems like a lot of people will notice that you're throwing really consistent lines want to follow you and then hopefully if they're really cool right they'll they'll offer to to give you a lead as well so yeah, i definitely like this track and it also I, I don't know why but these really tight small hot lap tracks seem to be the most replayable i guess where i definitely like will see myself losing track of time pretty quickly and here you can see i'm trying to follow reg without losing too much proximity i th i would say i probably have a little bit of a gap more than i should uh but also i try to drive in a way that i'm not going to disrupt everyone behind me as you can see there's a lot of drivers uh anyway we're now moving to takamaki i believe i'm saying that right if i remember this correctly this was on friday i was just struggling i mean to be honest that i feel like i wasn't getting in a groove there's a lot of tight corners kind of similar to clutch kickers actually and this part is crazy track cam looks crazy but also you're going uphill and you really need to kind of trust the car and the grip in there i think when i first was on this track i was using a lot of e-brake or even left foot brake but i've noticed i can be a lot more smooth and consistent if i just really stay off of it utilize the clutch the throttle of course and this is another really i think underrated underrated track in my opinion i mean this track teaches you a lot i think right here trying to main proximity get a little manji in you're throwing it in pretty heavy and then really trying to keep it outside on this line and then this section i i feel like i swear i struggle with so often where it kind of pinches you in and then gives you a very straight line to kind of manji through it is a little bit difficult but i think the more i've driven this i've started to started to respect this track and also i should also mention um that i really enjoy the track that is kind of bumpy i i feel like that's maybe just my personal opinion but i honestly like that kind of realistic feel i suppose where you can kind of feel a couple drops or divots in the track i want to say the gravel but i, I wouldn't i don't know if i'd go that far but yeah definitely this is a great track for those of you who might be a little bit more like let's say advanced intermediate i've driven a lot of these other uh, common tracks like clutch kickers or uh, maybe brooklyn park or tracks like that where there's not as much um, technical areas maybe i would say i don't want to say hard or difficult sections but just a little bit different than most of those tracks are going to offer you too so here you can see again admittedly a little bit uh a little bit off in the proximity but i really just try to to focus on not hitting people here we are i'm actually in a black s15 i think someone took that the red s4 or 15 first now this is villain sports land it is a very fun track now i was told that i, I and i was told i don't know but i was told that this is a us slash like mirrored version of nihon i in my brain i i believe it's true but i just struggle to <laughs> i just struggle to i guess agree with it i'm not sure maybe you guys could tell me uh but yeah this track is super fun again it is one that has a lot of little divots and bumps to some might be really annoying uh but again i i really do enjoy that taking a little bit more of a shallow line here going on the outside i used to try to manji that part but i got a little bit of flack i'm not gonna lie about <laughs> manching right there so this is me practicing uh not doing that and then also trying to be very consistent there's a lot of tight corners here so again you could probably argue hey you're really not taking a lot of these outside sections but i feel like if i do that's going to bunch up a lot of people behind me but this is a really fun track um i definitely think if you like clutch kickers and maybe a little bit more of the big entry sections or type of tracks maybe this is a really cool one to be on and here i actually left this in so i just wanted to comment on it a little bit i've seen people before do that jump or rotation where they go in front of the car it's it's okay i think definitely in a tandem situation but with a train it's gonna have a lot of issues i would say where people aren't expecting it it kind of bunches it up and and you might get a little bit of flack from the other drivers saying hey dude you know what are you doing but with uh 
with OTM in front of me. I am not reading his name very well for some reason. Well, you guys can see it, right? Anyway, uh, with this guy in front of me, he's very consistent. I, I think this is about midway through. Uh, we do typically like an hour section of different tracks. So I think he had a good feel for how I drove. I try to be as consistent as possible. And I, I think he saw the opportunity. And, and you know, honestly, I didn't mind uh, giving the lead up to him on this one. It's really fun to, to try to follow. I really, I, I hope I do a good example of it. It doesn't look like it, but really try to stick with him close right near his bumper. Yeah, I'm really far, but as close as you can get. And sometimes you'll just find yourself throwing it in um, right next to the door, which is crazy. And that big, like, uh, after you initiate and go through, it's insane. I feel like I'm literally at the max angle lock, and it's always a struggle to know how much more or less I need to pull the angle. But yeah, that track is super fun. Now, this track might be something that you've never seen before. I want to give a really big shout out for OTM for showing uh, us this track, actually. This is called Shin... Shinjuku Card Knight, I believe. Yeah, Shinjuku Card Knight. I probably am butchering uh, the name, but what's really fun about this track, and, and maybe you could argue it's not fun, depending how you look at it, these crazy pillars, I mean, they're literally the same color as the walls. Yeah, I think it's the walls and the roof. Kind of blends in together. Well, one thing, if you're driving this track, I really think that you just need to work on understanding where your lines are and <laughs> try not to look at the pillars, dude. The more you look at the pillars, the more they notice you and will grab your car. You think I'm joking? I promise you drive this track and you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's actually insane. It's a super fun track though. And I guess this little section here that you're seeing where we're going up the ramp, there was some issues I was told with some cars where I guess it catches or something weird like that and really messes up any runs that you even can have. They can't even make it through that little threshold. Luckily, the swarm pack doesn't have that issue. I did see someone have that issue. Shout out to Yasko. Uh, but basically, if you take it on the outside, it'll work out okay. I think it's something about the elevation change there. But I think here shortly, if I remember how I edited this, well, we should be switching into a chase situation. So now you've kind of seen the lines from me doing this lead. And it actually might be one more lap, it looks like. But uh, I think I just wanted to showcase like how crazy this track is. And also outside of me, just kind of giving some general thoughts here. It is definitely challenging, I would say, to keep in the, in the right lines without bunching. And, and again, I, I feel like I'm saying this maybe a little bit too often, but you're gonna notice I'm not all the way out on every single corner my personal thought in the way that i drive anyway again is very train or drift train centric where i'm really looking to make sure it's followable for multiple people and there's no sections where i'm really like bunching up all the cars behind me and then also speaking of that one area i'm going to point it out here in just a second so after this corner right here that's that threshold i was talking about that can kind of have some clipping issues but i also want to mention if anyone's having any issues on this track really got to be focused on having the right lines going up that if you lose momentum it's honestly over like it's it's hard to even recover from that and once you're done it's, it's kind of like instant reset you know don't pass go situation but think right about here there we go now we're in a chase and uh also this right here this little bump will help reorient your car. So I always try to go the opposite way when I hit that divot. It kind of resets up the car for this next section. So here we have Professor from OTM. And I must be losing my vision, but maybe it's just the uh, video preview here, but I'm like struggling to see his name, man. Don't hate me, bro. If you're watching this video, I'm so sorry. But yeah, here again, just trying to stay as close as I can it is kind of difficult and especially i don't i don't think i have much drive time myself on this track i think this is maybe combined three hours i want to say something like that but you can see i mean one cool thing about this track i like other than a 
those other things I mentioned is this kind of like security camera view in some sections and it's really cool to see all the, the cars I think the only yeah the only thing about this track too um, I know some people have had issues because of I, I want to say it's the lighting uh, with the reflection so if you do stumble upon this track uh, especially online most of the time I'm referring to online I think single player you know any of these tracks are going to be fine but um, online like with all the cars and those reflections you could have issues you could try maybe turning that down a little bit but yeah I, I really do enjoy this track quite a bit I think it's really challenging but like I mentioned once you get those lines down it kind of starts to, to open up a little bit and you don't have to worry too much about the uh, pillars oh and there it goes <laughs> It definitely is one of those tracks where you make a mistake and it's it's kind of over, man. It's so cool to watch, though. I mean, I guess I should just say when when I'm streaming, I don't get to see this top track camera ever. Uh, or rather, if I do, I definitely am going to not be looking at what I'm doing. So it's kind of fun just to, to watch that with you guys. It is definitely a really cool view. I think every track, actually, except for one track in this video has these track cams so Here you can kind of see trying to keep that proximity taking a little bit of a shallow line to keep up and again that's one of those things i mentioned I, I believe when we were on bhs where if you're losing proximity don't try to just aggressively straighten up and follow i think if you start taking shallow lines you know chaseable shallow lines eventually you're going to catch up and uh and not create a problem for those behind you too so okay, here we go i think yeah that's a great line you can kind of see automatically everyone bunches up it's interesting to see i think car four five and six are having to take a lot more shallow of a line but i don't think i'm very qualified to talk about lines or just because uh, i have no idea but anyway we are now on brooklyn park this is the beginning of our Saturday stream. So I think in the future, I'm just going to probably post uh, Saturday clips or from our Saturday stream. I mean, you probably saw how long this video is. So <laughs> it's a little, a little long to say it politely. But yeah, I, I actually do like this track a lot. Another, I could argue overdriven, but I think I'll just say like a commonly driven track for a lot of servers. Uh, I really think it's a great track for warming up and especially for focusing on proximity and transitions, things of that nature. Here you can kind of see, uh, hopefully it's a, apparent, I'm trying to really focus on those proximities and transitions with Reg in the lead. He has a very consistent lead and a very consistent line that's easy to follow. So I'm just trying to think about when is he going to transition? and preparing myself I, and i'm not sure you know those who, that have seen my last video i i mentioned i came from car x right and and one thing i got a lot of flack on personally was hey man you're transitioning too early you're transitioning too early so after a year of that i noticed when i came to ac and still i think is a little bit of a struggle for me i was always giving a lot of space to whoever's in front of me and all really late transitions which would put me back quite a bit and maybe some of you out there have had that same issue where it's like dude i cannot just keep proximity i feel like every time i transition i'm just losing all of this space what i've been told and what i've been working on is focusing on that front tire getting a little bit more aggressive and uh and kind of thinking about transitioning when they transition i'll explain it a little bit more but we're actually now on to shadow valley this was the first map that actually clicked for me I think it's a really great practice map as well. Very similar to Brooklyn Park. The biggest difference though, I would say is these elevation changes. Right here, you have a very wide sweeper all the way up to this nice little transition. I'm keeping it shallow here again to maintain that momentum for the people behind me. And then right here, filling it out a little bit. Now here you can go a little bit further outside. I think I was going more of a middle line. And I think this is the part that sets this track apart from Brooklyn or similar tracks with like more of a wide open flow where you have this big downhill throw in. 
that's been very cool to actually work on and improve similar to when we talked about villains how it has that big entry i think this track has that plus the downhill kind of challenges you to maybe approach it a little bit differently utilizing your left foot brake or utilizing you know really like clutch in or not clutching in and just kind of letting the car settle down i think overall i want to say i feel like i'm going to be not honest here i'm not sure we'll see on this next uh run down but i believe most of the time i'm clutching in uh and again it's just because i'm trying to keep up the s15's wheel speed it has a very grippy tire so the second it loses that wheel speed is uh is not a fun time at all yeah you can see a little bit of clutch in and then right into the gas because it did transition into a chase i was probably a little bit more on the left foot brake than i normally would be but yeah this is a really fun track i mean the only thing i will say for anyone that's interested in driving it it does seem like this is the one of the more uh resource intensive tracks so especially when we have a lot more drivers on the track it seems to collide i mean i won't get into a big rant here but you kind of have to work on having good i guess visuals but plus all these cars and then you already have so many things fighting against the kunos engine or the Aseta corsa engine that then with the cars and you know how they're optimized they kind of fight against each other so still a fun track regardless and here losing a little bit of proximity but again anytime hopefully i'm speaking truth here anytime i'm losing that proximity i'm just trying to maintain a consistent line which might end up being a little bit shallow uh, but still just trying to re-catch up here. Yeah, it's a, it's a, definitely a little bit far looking at it too. And also, I've been getting a lot of comments on the, uh, the FOV. I will be changing it. I just want to remind you guys, if you're listening to this section, uh, I'm on an ultra wide and then I have to resize it for Twitch because they only allow 1080. So it makes the field of view even worse than it probably would have looked anyway so it's not what i say I, i'll promise you that much but yeah here i i think you really have to know how the drivers in front of you are going to take that section so i i think i always leave a little bit of a gap unless i feel pretty comfortable now we're going to be switching to a track called rhythm and flow now this is another track shout out to otm that they showed me that i had never driven before if you've found the time marker and you skip to this or you're still watching i promise i know how to spell rhythm but that is actually how the track is spelled so i mean i don't know if that's intentional i feel like it probably is but uh yeah i would probably have to google rhythm but i, I definitely would fix it for <laughs> for a time stamp or if i was posting it somewhere but yeah this is a very unique track too very uh wide on sweepers i think the part that I enjoy and I think a lot of people enjoy is this section right here. I typically go a little bit, aim for the inside here, and then you kind of just throw it in. I've tried a lot of different techniques on like e-braking, um, clutching in. I'm not sure if I am qualified to say what works best here, but you can see too, again, like if you've seen some of these lines so far, you're like, hey man, like it looks good, but dude, can you please go on the outside? I don't think it's that egregious, but I could kind of see those comments. I'm really thinking about how I can maintain a very chaseable lead for a lot of different cars. So I'm not having anyone bunch up here. So that's, that's my uh, reason. And that's what I'm going with. So it works out for me. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'll say. All right. Now we're on a chase position. We have OTM reg in front of us. Can I read that far? Oh yeah, foul and 40K. All three of these drivers, really good drivers, by the way. Really fun, really consistent. Here, I think I'm losing a little bit of proximity on the chase. And you can kind of notice, I think the, as I'm watching it with you guys, it does seem like just a little bit late with some of those transitions, but here where I'm getting a little bit more proximity or rather getting a lot closer to him, you can notice I'm really transitioning basically when he is and that's kind of one thing that i guess for anyone else that that maybe is having uh 
you know, issues with trains or just follows. One thing I think about is when the car in front of me is straight. So in his transition, when he straightens, I should also be straightening at the same time. So maybe we'll see it in this next section. I think I, I think I left in two laps just because I wanted to give a little bit of insight here. Yeah. So you can see a little bit late there, but I took a shallower line trying to think about the people behind me trying to follow their line and not go too shallow though especially if i don't need to and i mean just look at that track camera i mean that's when you see the in sync transitions i mean i'm not the only one that feels away about it right that's it's just so fun to watch but yeah this is a great track too i mean definitely a great one to uh to practice on it looks like we are now back on UK streets. I did think about taking this out because it was in Ooh, someone died back there because it was in the last, uh, section, I guess, because that was our Friday. This is our Saturday stream. Uh, but I thought it'd be cool to include it here. You can see a lot more cars. I would also say like, you can maybe judge my line. At least the way I look at it is I judge my line by the lack of, I suppose, of crashes or people dropping out. I don't know if that's like a great way to measure, but I've been told my leads are decent. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So now we're seeing me actually driving when I'm a little bit more warmed up. That section right there, I would try to aim for that little rectangle on the inside. It seems a little bit more consistent or people chasing. I don't know if I could really say that that's the right line though. I'm still kind of messing with it myself. But yeah, here again, we're looking at trying to maintain that speed, not breaking too hard. So you'll notice I'm not even, well, maybe let's say 25% on the left foot brake. I think that's a, another mistake that sometimes can happen, especially when I was new to Assetto. I was very heavy on the left foot brake. Now I have this massively heavy uh, brake pedal, which helps me a ton, but I swear there's a lot of days where I get off the sim. A lot of weekends where I'm, my left foot is just, or my left leg rather is just completely dead. This section two, again, you know, when I look at it back, it doesn't look super shallow. It does feel shallow when I'm taking that corner, but I just think it is the most consistent and and this is what i guess i keep harping on so far this video is just like we want to think about being consistent and maintaining that forward momentum i mentioned i was from car x before where there was a lot of sideways back and forth like mainly you're just pinned on the throttle and then you're like left foot braking um really to like orient the car wherever you want it to go whereas you know assetto is a lot more realistic you're not going to want to be on the left foot brake as much and when you are I'm going to be careful that you're not slamming on it. Same for e-braking too, by the way. Uh, you're not slamming on it and kind of surprising maybe is the right word uh, for those behind you. And that line actually looked pretty decent. Like that's the line I would like to take most of the time if possible. Maybe I'll have to watch that back again later. But yeah, that, that line looked really good and, and definitely looked like it was pretty followable. But... I always struggle, especially on the chase on this section. It just seems like if you don't quite get that speed and you're not following them on the, uh, the entry, you'll lose proximity very quickly. And you'll notice that with a lot of these very fast wide sweeping tracks. I think some of them we've mentioned, but, uh, you know, BHS is one that I think about when we talk about wide sweeping fast tracks where, you know, once you get lost, you're, you're just kind of dusted. But here, yeah, I like to go outside wide and then a little mid slash inside, you know, not all the way on that guardrail. And then here I was before really going on midline, but I definitely see that I can run the outside line a little bit better. And it, I mean, it looks visually better too, but it seems to work out, especially for people following. I mean, there's no reason to, to have a middle line there. And then this section too, I'm curious how I'm going to take it. Yeah, so here, just a little bit of a clutch kick, keep the wheel speed up, help with the transition. I think I actually transitioned with the clutch. 
that section as well, I used to e-brake quite often, but I found that when you e-brake there, you lose that momentum and you end up getting someone crashing into the back of your car. So there's not like a decel zone or an acceleration zone like you might see on like FD, right? Like there's no specified markers or sections like that here. You just kind of have to fill it out. I always look at the, especially when I'm not able to look at the track can like we're looking at now. Um, I always look at those red arrows. I, I always feel like if I see one red arrow, I think I'm doing okay. If I see two red arrows, that means I'm actually having a really good lead. Definitely could probably debate that, but at least that tells me like, oh, okay. Or if I see like a very rapid change um, in the red arrow too. Yeah, I love that track. I guess I love this track so much, guys, that I put in <laughs> quite. I mean, this section is quite longer than I meant for it to be. But I think I want to say it was because I wanted to show a chase position. So here we have our good friend Yasko in the lead. It's always interesting especially when you're driving with newer drivers now i've driven with yasko quite a bit i think he was a little bit more getting comfortable with uh with these cars but he's getting a lot more solid but i think i was leaving a lot more proximity just because i wasn't necessarily sure how close i could get uh without you know messing him up and also you know everyone's lines are are a lot different uh and i think that's something that is pretty good to think about you know as you're going to the lobbies that have drivers you've maybe never driven with or only driven a couple times or maybe you haven't driven that track with them just kind of staying back giving a little bit of proximity seeing like how they're driving so then you can start closing it in a little bit more without risking slamming into the car i'm definitely guilty of still slamming into their car but uh but yeah, it's something to definitely think about for, for anyone that's a little bit newer to, to drifting or to a seto. Probably good rule of thumb, I think, though. I mean, IRL, I don't even think I'd be uh, this close to a lot of these cars. Maybe this close because I'm this far back, but hopefully you know what I mean. All right. So now I want to give a quick shout out to the OTM boys. I know we've seen them a couple times already in this video, uh, but they actually blessed us with something called the drift bible i'll get into that maybe a little bit later but this track we're on is tamada v3 so unfortunately this is the one track i believe it doesn't have the track camera but i did set it up for an over overhead i think we drifted on this for just a little bit this section is very difficult where you have this little bump you want to kind of use that to set you up run the outside line uh, and then the rest is kind of nice, actually. But yeah, I personally struggled quite a bit. This is my first time on this track. And it's always funny, like these older tracks, you know, might have a little bit less polys or look a little bit dated. But I think more often than not, though, they're typically a lot more, I don't want to say <laughs> optimized because that's probably not true, but um, a lot Let's just say less retor uh, resource intensive, I think is what I'm thinking of there. So, but here you can see I've never driven with our boy in front, SWT. I think I maybe actually have, but this is a new track for me. I'm not sure if it's a new track for him because it looks like he's doing pretty well. Uh, but I was just trying to maintain a little bit of proximity, closing in the gap a little bit there because I was feeling confident after a couple hot, hot laps back and forth. But yeah, I was really struggling to figure out how to take that session section. And also, whoever's behind me, I mean, that's that's really impressive. I, I don't know how he's just sticking with me this whole time. I feel like I was all over the track when we were on this quick session, but it's a pretty cool track. I think maybe there would be some of you that would like it more than me. Um will i see myself coming back to this track i don't know maybe if i'm feeling confident if i'm if i'm ready to get humbled probably you can see they're making a pretty big mistake on my side kind of messing up whoever's behind me but yeah shout out shout out to them i mean that's just crazy like especially 
like I mentioned, I, I don't get to see this top camera uh, when I'm driving. And watching just how close they, they were the whole time is, is absolutely insane. We're now on to another very OG OG track. This is Meek. Oh, I'm going to butcher this. I'm so sorry. I think it's Mikawa. <laughs> uh, that's the closest I'm going to get, I think. Mika, Mikawa Motorland. Now, what I was told is that this track is one of... When I say OG OG, I mean this was like one of the first drift tracks. I'm assuming modded drift tracks that were out in Aceto. Where really, if you wanted to drift, this was the one and only track that you'd be driving on. Which is really cool. I mean, I, it's crazy to learn about the history. I know I mentioned the Drift Bible. OTM has kind of given us a little bit of tracks, honestly, from there. This is where this is from. Uh, but it, it's a pretty fun track. I, I really enjoy, like, that little big entry here. <clears throat> I think this was... Uh, maybe about, you know, 15 minutes of driving we're trying to follow our friend <clears throat> excuse me fv mods <clears throat> i think he's driven this track a decent amount um not too bad though not too bad i think on the follow definitely a lot more of a gap than i would like to admit but i do find myself trying to keep a little bit of more uh, proximity especially when i don't feel comfortable on tracks uh, and this would definitely be one of them a brand new track but a pretty fun track for anyone that is maybe interested in it. I think there was a little bit of performance issues with this. I'm not necessarily sure why that was. As I mentioned, these older tracks seem to be better on performance, but I think this is one of those outliers for sure. But yeah, here I'm just trying to stick with uh, our friend mods up here. I don't really even know the lines. I'm trying not to just take outside lines, just really trusting in in how he's going to drive and I do have like a decent amount of driving time actually with him so I'm a little familiar on how he drives but yeah you can see right there I, I just wasn't sure how to take it losing a ton of proximity luckily I didn't see any red arrows behind me so I said hey you know what I'll just kind of uh choke up and try to catch up with him so I definitely would say like just for the history this is a fun track to maybe try uh you can see like I, I think a lot of people were learning this track so there's not as much close tandems or maybe trains. You can see there are quite a bit of drivers out there though too. And I'm not sure if maybe I should just mention it while we're talking about it. If you've seen like cars disappear or like wheels not show up or something, uh, you know, to that nature, a lot of the settings that I run, I'm trying to find this really in line between visually appealing and uh, performance, I guess in general. Typically on, on our server, when we drive, like we're having, you know, 20, 25, 30 drivers. So really trying to make sure I can keep up and not have stuttering issues. As well as I, I heard you can turn off the smoke, but I just feel like it takes off too much realism uh, for me. But here we are on a chase. We have Ace in front of us. Looks like he might be learning the track a little bit. Again, just trying to follow, see what the train's doing. I think with a little bit more time and practice, I think uh, people could drive this track pretty easily. I believe we only drove this track for maybe 30 minutes. So there's actually not a ton of footage from this. Uh, but I do think there's a, or a, obviously a healthy amount. <laughs> Definitely a healthy amount. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun track. I, I, I'm just trying to think like, is there anything in here that stands out? Oh, you can see those lead cars getting into some trouble, but I don't really think there's any crazy standout sections in that one. Now, here's another track courtesy from our friends from OTM. This is Slide Boys Sanctuary, and Slide Boys is spelled B-O-I-Z, like the cool kids. But this is a fun track. I mean, this is a... I, I think a lot of people, myself included, struggled with it. Um, I think for the most part, when I edited this, I did want to try to have the start of the track um, at the beginning. I, I think this was a little bit in the middle. So right here, you can see to our right, that's where the pits are. Kind of throw it in. You can see I'm going pretty shallow uh, to say it lightly, but I just, this is really my first time again on this track. There's a couple of markers. I think overall, 
they're helpful. You'll see that I'm not hitting all of them. I think I did try at one point, but I wasn't positive if it, if it was really a good train line. So I was just kind of messing around, seeing what felt right to me. And here we're actually going to be on a chase. I believe this Alteza in front of us. You'll see here how he takes it, a little bit of a straighten. I'm making a mistake here. Definitely making a lot of mistakes here. It's hard to watch, not gonna lie. Looks like I have a little bit of a train going too, which is pretty cool. And yeah, this is, I think, a good example of just giving enough space, staying locked in as much as possible on proximity, but knowing that I'm not really sure what the lines are. Uh, these two drivers in front of me, I haven't driven with before. I don't know what they're going to do. I do try to sometimes absorb maybe the lines that are in front of me, but sometimes I can end up being a detriment. So that one, I think I was just following. Now, again, the rest of these tracks, all courtesy of OTM. Genuinely, thank you guys for showing us these tracks. These are all ones that I've never driven before. I think since, uh, that Tomata V3 track. But this one is CG Drift Valley V2. So this is brought to you by Clutch Gang. They make actually quite a bit of tracks. Uh, this one is really cool to me, though. One thing I like about this track is it feels compact, but not claustrophobic, if that makes sense. I was really trying to work on myself finding again that train line. You'll see I dropped a little bit on that proximity, just kind of thinking about my lines a little bit. I am trying to stay with him. You can hear quite a bit of clutch kicking. This car just loves to grip up. So I'm trying to keep that wheel speed, trying to stay active in this chase. This entry is very fun too. Very similar to uh, Villains, Villain Sportsland that we talked about, even like maybe Shadow Valley. Not as aggressive though, I would say. This is a really fun track. I, I, would, I would definitely recommend it. I could, I could see myself practicing a little bit more. And it seems like watching this back on the track cam, I wasn't sure at the time, but it does look like mods is taking pretty decent train lines. There's a couple sections that do tighten up that I wasn't a hundred percent sure about, but yeah, it looks like this man definitely knows the lines pretty well. And it's always hard to tell. Like you'll, you'll sometimes go on a track and you'll see these different markers or section markers like outside zones or touch and goes it's hard to really tell if those are going to be helpful for again a train situation i mean if i had a train counter that the times i said train i feel like it'd be pretty high at this point but that's just where my mind is but now we move on uh i for sure i know i'm gonna butcher this one this is oh, okay okay Okiawa Sportsland. I think that's as close as I'm going to get, boys. Uh, this one, again, is another map from OTM. I guess there is a version of this without snow, but uh, the one that I happen to have downloaded or received, rather, has the snow, which I don't mind personally, but I did hear they made a couple comments that uh, th some of the track sections basically are are not visible which makes it a little bit difficult but yeah i would say this seems pretty simple of a track but definitely is a lot more challenging maybe it could be a skill issue on my part for sure but here we have mods in front of us this is the interesting part right here it seems like if you throw it in really hard if you have the grip available to you uh the car really likes to to rotate in that part you can kind of see, especially looking at the track cam, just how aggressive some of those transitions are. But because it's so tight, I almost feel like it's required. Again, not sure. I haven't spent a lot of time. This section is really interesting. It seems just so awkward. It's just not enough to extend the drift, but it kind of feels weird to Manji, and I really don't like to straighten. So definitely <laughs> upon thinking about it, maybe most likely a skill issue. I definitely would like to see that outside zone taken a little bit more. Here we'll see. Yeah, a decent, a decent uh, transition. I was actually looking at the the pedal 
monitor at the bottom right. Looks like I just kind of threw it in. And, and honestly, like some people have said, hey man, like, you know, just so you know, if you drove like that, if you had that much clutch kicking and stuff, like, you know, you wouldn't have a clutch. Which honestly, I mean, that's probably true, but the way I look at it is I've, I've watched some in-car footage of drivers in FD, like the Nofa uh, is probably like the one that comes to mind where he actually uses a lot of clutch. You know, he'll be mainly throttle and clutch and, and that seems to work out well. I'm not saying I'm an FD driver, but anyways, that's, that's at least why. Now we're moving to, oh, these are always, oh, this is not bad, Suzuka Twin Drift. So it seemed like the lobby liked this track quite a bit. Um, every Saturday, actually every time, every time I stream, we try to switch tracks every hour. You know, I'll throw a pull up, see how people are feeling, and then, um, you know, keep it fresh, keep it interesting, get a lot of different practice on different tracks. And this one, actually, all of these that you've seen so far have been a 30 minute uh, session. This one actually ended up being an hour because people liked it. I think it's because of this entry here, which is crazy, by the way. Big entry here. You can hear I'm at the top of third. Car's really struggling. I do think that if I revisit this track in the future, the conversation to myself will probably be that, hey, look, you know, we need to readjust the gearing. You do actually need to shift and, and not be that guy in one gear the entire track. <laughs> as much as I like to be, I just, uh, I think this track, the way that it rides would be a lot better if I was actually transitioning. But yeah, definitely a fun track. I uh, would recommend checking it out. This track here is called Lithakia, oof, Rough Zante, I believe. I forget where the location was. It was somewhere really interesting. Another OG track. Another one brought to you by the OTM boys. Uh, this one's pretty fun. This section right here, a really tight corner. And then this goes really narrow, which you can see I'm losing a lot of proximity. I'm just kind of nervous about that section and hitting the tire wall. And then this transition section, still wasn't sure how to take it. I actually don't think that that was too bad. Just trying to keep as much proximity as I can without being too aggressive. Trying to make sure if there's anyone behind me, because yeah, I see two red arrows there, um, that I'm not making too big of mistakes. And, it, and it's kind of interesting too, these tighter corners, these tracks with these tighter corners, you definitely want to try to follow whoever you're, uh, follow whoever I guess I'm just worried about the phrasing of this, but whoever you're following, right? Try to follow their line because you'll see, I think we saw a little bit ago, but if you try to cut it in and cut into proximity, you just don't have the wheel speed or the angle, or it just feels really weird. And then you'll end up either straightening or really colliding with people. So this is our final track of the session. Uh, Motor Park Kozalin. Ooh. These names are really, uh, really challenging me here, it looks like. But yeah, this track is definitely a ton of fun. It is a massive workout for anyone that's interested. Uh, really technical. I mean, I guess when I saw the track layout initially, I was like, hey, this track is going to be pretty cool. But you can see, I mean, just on the in-game in footage, like you can see all the bumps. This corner is insane. I mean... I don't think I hit this well <laughs> a single time. This was at the end of uh, our Saturday session, our 12 hour session, actually. So my arms were dead. I think more than that, I think my uh, my willpower was just waving. But this was really a lot of fun. I, I really would like to, to go back to this track. Foul in front of us just throwing really nice lines. I mean, I think uh, one thing I'll say too, if there's a track that you're struggling with, if you're having issues, find someone that's running consistent lines and that will help kind of unlock and help you understand those uh, same lines. I mean, I typically do that. I think if you had the commentary from my stream on here, I actually would be saying like, hey, like I, I'd need a, because before this, I was just trying to take it myself. Hey, I just need to follow someone and kind of get a feel for it. 
And, and I think this corner, that last corner right there, is a really good example of me going too shallow, not following the lead line in front of me, and then kind of having some weird issues and uh, really losing a lot of my wheel speed too. So I definitely would recommend uh, this track. I have a lot more to, to improve on myself. Well, <clears throat> hopefully here, I think we might be going into a lead position. Yep. And uh, there's my there's my boy, Foul. Pretty much psyching me out. <laughs> you can see I accidentally hit the lights. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. He said, hey, man, training wheels are off. I need to see you uh, get these lines. But yeah, a ton of fun. Um, I, honestly, also, as we're coming to the conclusion of this video, sincerely, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I want to say thank you guys so much for all of the feedback, all just the reception to the last video, reviewing the swarm pack. Uh, you know, I'm just so grateful to you guys uh, and definitely grateful to everyone joining in the server. I mean, these sessions are extremely fun hopefully if if you're still listening the uh server link will be in the description i'd love to see you guys in there discord link as well um join in any any level any skill level is more than welcome and yeah i, I do want to do these sessions or maybe i'll say these youtube videos more frequently on a, actually on a weekly basis after editing it as you can see you know it's insane to think that it's actually been almost an hour of, of footage. But I think with just doing a Saturday and not the Friday session, it will be more uh, palpable around like 40 minutes or so. But thank you again, everyone for watching. If you have any feedback for this series, please let me know. I really hope you guys enjoy it. I really enjoyed editing it and uh, just kind of like vibing, having some commentary with you guys. So. Thank you again. Sincerely, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I'll see you on the next week or I'll see you on the weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Peace.